watch before he came out tonight. <laughs> Rob Needham, the brickie, spends most of the night on the dance floor, but with no particular partner. Slower ones are for the women. Slower ones for the women. I enjoy dancing with my friends, you know, have an excellent time with my friends. And if any of the slower ones come in, then fair enough for the ladies. But at the moment, I'm quite happy dancing on my own with my mates, and that. have a good time. Nicola's also dancing with her friends rather than members of the opposite sex. So what's the main ingredient for a good time? The atmosphere, as soon as you walked in, you could tell like, it was going to be a good night. It's really buzzing. So are you telling me, at 20 past 12, that you four lovely ladies haven't pulled a fella yet? <laughs> I'm telling you, we haven't pulled. <laughs> no, I still yeah, young. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like now 20 minutes to go. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> After midnight, with the club packed, there are some problems for the door staff to sort out. You go up there and you talk to them nicely. Then you go a little bit more aggressive in your voice. No, you mean business. If they start confronting you by waving their arms, throwing fists, swearing, you use, abusing, you use enough force to, to get him out of the club. Gary! You said to say Gary, about the car. We've got a car in a car park. We think it may be stolen. They're going to check it out. At the end of the day, a doorman does have a difficult job. He has to make discretionary decisions the whole time, with dress, with a person's attitude, and if there is a physical confrontation, if it actually gets to the point where people have to be ejected, and we're lucky the volume of people that we go through, we do have very, very few problems. But if a, if a physical situation does arise, then their training comes totally into effect, and they use the minimum amount of force necessary to deal with that situation. I have got rid of door staff before now on two occasions where a member of door staff has overreacted. A very unfortunate situation, but on both occasions there was intense provocation given. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, we have to look upon it from a professional point of view, and we can't afford to jeopardise our business and to jeopardise the safety of our customers by having anyone who might go off in a loose cannon way. They have to adhere very strictly to our rules, our code of conduct, and also the code of conduct, conduct laid down um, by the council and by the police. I don't strike anybody unless they're going to strike me first, and that's the way I work. But I've been working the door 16 years, I've got no convictions at all, so I'm a fair man. They want to behave themselves, that's, that's good with me. If they want to play up, they're going out. A fight which started on the dance floor was quickly broken up, but trouble continues outside. A car's been damaged and the police have been called. If there's trouble, we, we haven't done a very good job. You know, we, we try and vet the people as they come in. Obviously, because drink does do things to people, which it wouldn't normally do, and the personality changes, and that's when you have to deal with it. But overall, most people are fairly well behind. Good crowd, very good crowd. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? A training course for Essex Police sniffer dogs. The club gives them their first real test. Most of the dogs are less than a year old, and the handlers have had just one full week working with them. They've planted drugs for the dogs to find. What the handler is doing here, he's making sure that the dog covers all the areas that the handler wants him to cover. If left to his own devices, the dog would run around quite happily, but he may miss areas that the handler wants checked. So the handler will be queuing him to certain areas to make sure that he's happy that that area has been searched. So together they work as a team to make sure that the whole area is searched and nothing is missed. Hey, good boy. What you got there? When these dogs do go operational, they'll be caught all sorts of areas to do their searching, in houses, clubs, pubs, all types of areas. But one of the main reasons we'd like to come in places like this and do the training is because of the variety of smells. This is what we call a live area. 
you can walk in, there's cigarette, stale cigarette smoke, there's people, there's smells from everywhere, the bar area, dirty carpets, the cleaning, everywhere. There's a lot of smells for the dog to um, pick up and actually get confused, possibly with the drugs. Good boy. Good boy. What have you got? Good boy. What is it? Oh, good boy. All the drugs we've got are the real thing. We've got cannabis, herbal, resin, amphetamine sulfate, and cocaine and heroin. We have ecstasy tablets, which is methamphet in a tablet form, such as these. And the reason I have these in the um, polythene bag is because we, like, we don't want human scent to go on the drugs. What we want is the dogs to actually find the drug scent rather than the human scent, so they're not contaminated with our human scent. What reward do they get, Andy, at the end of it then? Well, why should they go for the drugs? Well, the main reward is the praise from their dad. The handler makes such a fuss of them, they well, know they've been a good boy, and that's what they uh, <laughs> enjoy. Good boy. This training is vital. Essex police confirmed that despite the death of Leah Betts, ecstasy is still a popular drug among young people. Even well-run clubs can't guarantee to be drug-free. If someone wants to pop a, an ecstasy pill in the car park or outside before they come into the club, we have no way of knowing or identifying that when the person walks through the front door. That drug may take anything up to 20 minutes, 30 minutes to start being effective with someone. We know the physical signs to look for. We know the, the hyper energy that someone will, um, will display if someone's constantly drinking water. Um, we can monitor the whole club by saying that if our water sales um, were a phenomenal amount, then we have got a problem with people coming in here possibly taking drugs. In fact, sales of mineral water at the club went up from three or four cases a week in 1994 to 30 or 40 cases a week last year. But sales are still tiny compared with beer. It's the combination of drink and dance fatigue that make Nicola and her friends late risers the morning after. They'd enjoyed themselves, although Nicola was a witness to the fracas on the dance floor. And there's a stage bit in front of the DJ stand. There was a fight on there. And uh, I just got pushed out of the way by about four bouncers and five other people. And, and then, uh, and then there, was another, there, was two, there was another fight, actually, on the dance floor, but I, didn't, I walked the other way. I sort of didn't go and get involved in that. <laughs> not, not quite into it, really. No, not, not yeah, I just wasn't in the mood, man. <laughs> when it gets that crowd, it gets a bit... Like, you bump into everyone all the time, and like, it gets a bit annoying, but... It's normally like that anyway, so get used to it. If it was any less crowded, it would probably not be as good. And uh, the music was like the best of it. I've heard it down there. It was, like the tune, they, the tunes they were playing weren't commercialised. They were really, really good. Yeah, excellent music. But the nightclub isn't only for young people. Tony Appleton is in his fifties and goes to the club every Tuesday. He's a bachelor, but adores women. His hobby was getting photographed with celebrities. He's particularly proud of the picture he got at a press launch with Liz Taylor. She's talking on the stage, talking all about herself, and I literally jumped out of the crowd over the banisters and uh, presented her with an orchid, which I knew was her favourite flower. Uh, consequently, I got the picture and then I was thrown back over the banisters by her bodyguard, and that's, that's the picture there when I was actually being thrown over. Hi, ladies. Yes, thank you. Nice. Tony Appleton's business is running a home for the elderly. He sees nothing strange in the fact that his weekly escape is to go clubbing on over 25's night. What would you like, darling? Bread pudding? Tabioca. Tabioca. Tabioca? Right. People put a big emphasis these days on age. I mean, age, I don't think about age. But Tuesday nights, as far as I'm concerned, for the over 25's, is the, is the best night of the week to go to Duke's. Um, you get a lot of young females there who quite like an um, older gentleman. I mean, and this is, and the, perhaps that keeps me young. <laughs> and is there any age at which you'll say, I'll stop night clubbing? Me? No, I don't feel, I mean, no, I, uh, well, well, I mean, this is it. I mean, I just feel great. I mean, I, I do a lot of training, keep myself fit. And I think going to nightclubs like Dukes, that sort of thing, keeps you young as well. I mean, you're mixing with young people. I mean, it's, uh, and I'll, I'll mix it with old in the daytime, so I'll mix it with young in the evening. <laughs>